Hello, my name is Eric Lopez. I'm a solution architect for VMware, and my co-presenter is Justin Bettis, um, who's a developer on the Open uh, vSwitch team that's with VMware. Um, the person who is supposed to be doing this talk, Somic, uh, he's not here today, so I'll be taking over doing this presentation. 40 minutes. 40 minutes? Okay. We thought this was going to be a very quick session. So what we're going to do is do a deep dive in terms of OpenStack and VMware um, NSX architecture and actually how we provide network virtualization for OpenStack um, and why it is actually better um, using VM, uh, VMware NSX in your OpenStack environment. So we have five key points that we want to talk about. Um, talk about OpenStack and VMware. And then we'll do an introduction to OpenStack Neutron. Uh, hopefully, some of you are familiar with that. Um, we'll talk about some of the uh, use cases on that. And then we'll go into a deeper dive in terms of OpenStack Neutron and how NSX plays with that. And that will give you an idea of actually why NSX is very important for enterprise type applications. And then we'll do sort of what's next. And this is what we'll cue into what Justin's going to be talking about in terms of uh, Hyper-V and Docker containers and things like that. That what is the next generation, what's going on with NSX. And then we'll do a slight demo showing you how Hyper-V is interacting with NSX at this point as well. Um, if we do have some time, I actually can do a live demo part and show you actually a full integration of multi-hypervisors, ESX, Docker containers, Hyper-V, um, KVM. Um, we can actually do Xen as well, but I don't have that in that particular demo. Um, and if you were ever at the VMworld, we actually did that whole exact demo during that uh, presentation in San Francisco as well. <laughs> so the key thing about OpenStack and VMware SDDC, so Software Defined Data Center, so it's for us to provide a framework to assemble sort of an AWS type uh, infrastructure for you to provide your infrastructure as a service to your clients or, or your um, tenants. Um, so this is for developers. And you have all the essential component variations that are available. So Horizon, uh, all the CLI tools for all the different projects, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Glance. But the underlying infrastructure can be whatever it is that you're doing. So <laughs> typical, it's KVM, Linux bridge architecture, and Ceph for doing the providing the Glance as well as the C Cinder part. With NSX, we actually take over the Linux bridge, and we actually do provide all the plumbing for the network environment. So, and then using ESX as a hypervisor, we provide sort of the ESX hypervisor as well as the vCenter for the scalability issue. And then you actually use any type of the vCenter type of storage. Um, this could be a third party that plugs into the data storage environment or it could be uh, the vSAN product as well. So you can do your application provisioning management, <laughs> developer tools, service API, so any type of, in terms of your application developers, your DevOps teams, or whatever that are providing, they have all the uh, open APIs that are currently available for that. So <clears throat> what we call th this infrastructure is, is currently in beta. It's called the VMware Integrated Open Stacks, or the VIO. Um, the we, if you want to get information about that, uh, talk to our uh, product managers. Go to our booth and talk to them about how to, get, uh, to be part of the VIO beta. So. <laughs> That's sort of what is OpenStack, how we integrate with it. Now we're going to talk about a quick view, overview of OpenStack Neutron. So if you're looking at terms of large scale environments, so hundreds, thousands of tenants, thousands of networking switches and things like that, there's a scalability issue with sort of the uh, Nova Neutron, um, <coughs> Nova networking. So in terms of th that, Neutron improves on this type of environment. So <coughs> large number of tenants, you want to do L3 type routers, security, so you want to do security groups, things like that. Load balancing as a service, VPN as a service. Neutron provides that basic functionality and that plumbing for you. So you can actually have multiple tenants using multiple logical routers, have multiple logical switches as well. Um, load balancer, VPN services and things. We support overlay, so in terms of, instead of doing uh, VLAN type isolation, now you have the ability to do uh, L3 over L2, uh, L2 over L3 type network. So these overlay networks. So you can use GRE, VXLAN, and any other tunneling protocol that are possible. <clears throat> so it removes one of the major limitations of using VLANs, which is the 10 for, uh, 4096 type 
number of uh, address spaces that you can do or the virtual LANs that you can use. So, and now you have IP to IP connectivity over this overlay network easily in that, that type of environment. So as one, from one hypervisor to another, it uses this overlay network to communicate to another VM on a different hypervisor. So, and it looks like it's L2 adjacent on that system. <laughs> and then you can have any type of open solution. So this could be our uh, VM VMware NSX plugin, could be the Linux Bridge plugin, OVS plugin, as well as Cisco U UCS um, plugin, the NEC RU plugin, or any of the third-party providers that are providing the underlying tunnel network. Um, so that that's the use case in terms of using Neutron. Um, this allows you to get, get the scalability that you want and improves on the current limitations that are on, on Nova network. So, and now using OpenStack Neutron with NSX, we can actually take a look at actually what the type of environment that this does, as, as well as break some of the limitations that currently the uh, OpenStack Neutron has with using the base uh, reference platform of OVS. So, in terms of our application, NSX is actually a distributed, highly distributed application. Um, we have this control cluster that controls all the flows in that environment. It actually learns about the different points and how those uh, systems are supposed to communicate and programs the edge devices, which are your hypervisors, to actually know how to switch the packets around in that environment. So this high availability cluster is designed to scale. It's fully active-active. So you just add more nodes to actually, as your workload increases, you can add, add increased control clusters in that environment. <laughs> we actually have also a management console. This is a different management console. It's mostly used for troubleshooting and actually operational aspects of that environment. It still uses all the leverage of the APIs that are from OpenStack, can communicate directly with the controllers. We have our own API that the controllers provide to provide any type of API call. So it's very easy to integrate into any of your open, your own homegrown dev platform or dashboard platform that you have. So if you have typical workflows, you can use our APIs to call that. You don't have to use our manager or you don't have to use the OpenStack APIs. So that gives you that flexibility. The, third, the second thing is smart tunnels. So we actually have the ability to do some additional encapsulation method. One is STT to actually increase the performance between the hypervisors to get near wire speed performance between two of the hypervisors, as well as any other encapsulation technology that's going to occur, so VXLAN, as well as the next generation encapsulation technology. And then we actually have the ability to do some of the issues with the VXLAN was we have for broadcast, multicast type traffic. Um, we have a service node that allows us to replicate that packet in the, in the environment. So each of the hypervisor nodes are not dealing with specific broadcast, multicast traffic. Those get offloaded, offloaded to another node to actually do that replication and it does it smartly. It's a fully resource uh, scalable solution as well as that, in that environment. And then we actually have the ability to do L2 and L3 type gateway services that are in a highly, highly available state. So <laughs> these services are active active. So if you lose one of the edge gateways, it, all the information gets uh, uh, synced between the systems and a, a new system will take over for that particular process. So you actually have this highly scalable infrastructure to provide the logical network for your environment. <laughs> so some of the improvements that we do in, in this environment, so scale, so we actually have a very high scale limit um, in each of our uh, NSX domains, so those are the control clusters that are, that are controlling this, 15,000 logical routers. So that's a lot, lot of logical networks that you can provide, and then you're gonna have 60,000 logical ports or VMs that can attach into those 15,000 um, networks. Um, this is all fully active active. <coughs> the other thing is high throughput, so you can actually bond together two 10 gig NICs and you can get near wire speed. So essentially 20 gigabits between those two 10 gigabits that are bonded. So if you need that wire speed communication for data transfer in the tenant network, that we can actually provide that type of scale. And the third thing is now we actually have optimized traffic for doing the L3 and, L and security. So based upon implementing the security policies, those are done at, the ed at those edge points in terms of where those packet is being processed. So if a packet comes in, you have the security policy for ingress or egress, they'll be done at either at the source hypervisor or at the destination hypervisor. 
as well as distributed uh, logical routing. So instead of doing, going through uh, a node that's doing your L3 type networking, it does not get tromboned in that environment, but now actually you can have the hypervisors transmit that packet directly to each other. So we actually have full distributed logical routing in our environment. So we optimize the traffic for both security policy as well as routing between the hypervisors, so a lot of the east-west traffic that is served by that. <clears throat> so as VMs communicate to each other, if they're on the same hypervisor or if they're on the different hypervisors, we optimize the traffic pattern for that. So, <clears throat> and lastly, management. So ability to actually manage a lot of the system. When you start looking at the scale, how do you actually troubleshoot, operate this type of environment? We have our own management layer that actually allows us, this is what the, the NSX manager does in terms of that aspect. So <laughs> as we offload specific data path information, we're actually able to learn information about the environment. So <sighs> our whole design is for management and high availability for those ter type of enterprise applications that you're looking at. So <laughs> management monitoring tools. So there's specific monitoring tools, like I mentioned before. Stats, you can get stats on a per logical port. Port connections, now you can actually do logical port connections and port connection tools to actually see in the underlay actually how they're communicating and actually how the environments are actually communicating to each other. Um, we can actually inject packets into the environment to actually do a trace flow to see where the packet gets propagated in your environment. Um, and you actually can do different types of packet signatures on, uh, on that as well from the different NICs, packet size, packet length, so it gives you that troubleshooting operational aspect. And then we actually have the ability to mirror logical ports as well, to be actually mirror logical traffic to different points in your environment, so you can use your existing uh, application tools for monitoring to, to notice that particular data patterns or whatever that you do in your typical environment. So security policies for uh, compliance monitoring, things like that, IDS, IPS, you can actually offload into your current working environment from the logical space. And then we actually have the ability to upgrade our NSX components. Since we are a very highly distributed application, we have what we do, an update coordinator. It will co coordinate the process of upgrading to the next version of the software. So it will upgrade the, the different components in our environment in a timely manner for you guys and actually help operate that aspect. <laughs> and then we also integrate with other different bare metal tools. <clears throat> so in terms of networking services, L3 with static routing, L2 logical networks, we actually have VT hardware VTEP devices that we can actually plug into as, in, as well. So, and then if you have any type of ACLs, QoS, we actually able to provide those additional services as well in terms of bandwidth rolling on a particular VM process as well as doing some of the DHCP process. So if you have differentiated service um, protocol that you're using, you can say from the particular VM environment, you can actually we replicate that packet data onto the underlaying infrastructure so the underlay knows, understands what type of packet is being propagated in that environment. So we have the DHCP markings that are occurring at that. So, next part. Hi, so as uh, Eric mentioned, my name is Justin Pettit. I'm one of the core OVS developers. And uh, you know, the key part of how to um, get uh, NSX to work on multiple hypervisors is through OVS. And so what I'm going to talk about today is some of those efforts that we've been uh, putting into getting OVS to run on more platforms. So we've been focused uh, lately on support for DBDK, Hyper-V, and Docker. And so today I'll talk about uh, the last two of those. So with uh, Open vSwitch and Docker, uh, we've begun working on integrating OVS and Docker already. So uh, a few months ago, Aaron Rosen, one of the core uh, Neutron developer or uh, yeah, neut uh, Neutron developers um, uh, added support to OpenStack uh, for OVS and Docker. Uh, so in this case, it pretty much just looks, as far as uh, OVS and NSX is concerned, um, that it's just a standard uh, VM that's connected with VIFs instead of being uh, VIFs uh, that are usually used in VMs. <clears throat> To the OVS repo, uh, we've added documentation and integration scripts to work with Docker and OVS. And we've begun working with the Docker community to uh, see about adding uh, OVS as one of the supported backends uh, for, uh, for Docker. 
So the way that we view Docker is that it's good for instantiation uh, for well-known configurations. But the uh, security can be a little bit more difficult because you have to protect against the full Linux API. Uh, so the way that we've been viewing things is that you know, if you have uh, your security uh, domains, you want to have those. those can be a, the containers can be adjacent to each other. But if, for example, you were running, um, you know, if you were a service provider and you had different tenants, you may not want to run those adjacent to each other and instead run those in different, uh, in different VMs or on different bare metal hosts. And I'll, I'll talk about the, those configurations in just a second. Um, so the first one is the, uh, the model that I mentioned where uh, we're running on bare metal. And so these, so, you know, I guess the laser's not working. Anyway, these, um, these different Docker instances are connected to VEATHs into that um, OVS, that's the green circle there. And as I mentioned, to OVS, this just looks like, uh, you know, it, if it could be a VIF or it could be VEATH, or it doesn't really matter, they're just interfaces. And then we associate information from the cloud management system uh, that identifies what the other end of those VEATHs are attached to, to OVS, that then sends that information to NSX so that you can implement your policies. And so this is supported already. But, uh, and, you know, depending on how concerned you are about these things, um, we'd recommend that these different Docker instances um, are you know, in the same security domain, just because if one of them breaks out, then it could affect the traffic for the others in that green, um, in that green switch. Uh, another model that we're, we're looking at supporting is if you want to run multiple Docker containers, but this time in a VM. <clears throat> and in this case, we're, um, you know, if any of these Docker instances breaks out, if all of the policy was implemented in that red OVS, uh, then it could modify the traffic and modify the connectivity between things so you could break down the isolation that, uh, that you're looking to provide through something like NSX or um, you know, any of the uh, logical networking uh, services that you may want to run. So what, we're, what we are proposing is that in these environments, what you would do is use the red OVS to tag the information to identify which, uh, which of the Docker instances they are. And then that information would then be relayed, relayed down to that green OVS that then actually enforces the policy and then connects the tunnels. So uh, this requires more uh, work with, uh, with OVS and the upstream Docker community, but we are uh, beginning to work on that. So then I wanted to talk about uh, our port of, uh, of Open vSwitch to Hyper-V. So this is a collaboration between uh, VMware and CloudBase. And I mentioned that this is the uh, largest external contribution that we've had. And the reason it's really external from both of these is that the core OVS developers were really more Linux people than Windows. So the group that actually implemented uh, in VMware the support for OVS was a different group from the core OVS developers. And so, um, VMware and CloudBase had each developed their own port to Hyper-V, and so what we decided to do was merge the efforts together. And so uh, both of these teams proposed changes, and then the core OVS developers sort of went through and made suggestions and then have pulled code in based on uh, requirements, or based on the feedback that we've given. So um, the, uh, it's the newest supported uh, platform. It uses the same user space, so OVS vSwitchD, which is actually where most of the code for OVS resides for switching is exactly the same on the platforms, except now it's Windows, a Windows binary. And all of the utilities, if you're familiar with them, are the same. So OVS OF Kettle, DP Kettle, and VS Kettle, you know, they're all identical, except now they're Windows binaries. The data path is implemented as an in-kernel forwarding extension to Hyper-V's native switch. So the performance you know, should, should be that, match that of a native, uh, native switch on Hyper-V. So all the code is upstream in the master branch. We're going to include it in OVS 2.4. Uh, but the initial release, it's not feature complete yet. And um, you know, I'd only recommend using it for testing purposes. But we're moving quickly towards um, we want to get feature parity and uh, have it be, uh, you know, work just as well as any of the other platforms. And then finally, um, the, all the code for making it work with OpenStack um, is been done, but it hasn't been sent for review. So hopefully that will happen soon. So actually I actually have a demo um, of using NSX and Hyper-V together. So in, this, uh, in, the, in the demo that you'll see, there's two different hypervisors, and these are Hyper-V hypervisors in blue here on the bottom left. And so there's Hyper-V R3 and Hyper-V R4. You can see these have uh, 10 dot addresses, and they're connected together with a VXLAN tunnel. 
and there's three VMs that are uh, one on um, R3 and two on R4. And then those ones have addresses in the 172 address space. So this is the physical layout, but then logically in NSX, we configured them, the, uh, these VMs, to be on the same logical switch. So when we run the demo, you'll uh, get to see what that, um, you'll, you'll see how, we, uh, how that's done. So here we are on the uh, hypervisor R3, and you can see that uh, VS Kettle, sorry, that um, VS Kettle is run here, and there's the, um, down here, there's the OVS R3 port one in VS Kettle, and this is the database that shows the configuration. And here with the OVS DP Kettle command, which communicates directly with the kernel module, you can see that the, uh, the port is created as well. So now we're gonna go to um, R4, and we'll, we'll go back to the hypervisor in a second, but these are the two VMs that are running on R4. So the first one has the address 172.168.1.4, and the other one has the address 172.168.1.5. So remember, there are two VMs here on this R4 host. So now we'll go to the uh, hypervisor window, PowerShell, and you can see that there are two interfaces um, shown in VS Kettle. There's the OVS R4 port two and OVS R4 port one. So both these exist, and then if you run the DP kettle show command, you'll see that they both exist in the uh, kernel module as well. So now what we'll do is we're gonna go to the NSX screen. And so first we'll look at RS R3's configuration. And so, we'll go up, sorry, there's a little bit of delay here from the VNC session, but you can see that this is, wait a second, that this is um, Hyper-V R3 in the NSX console. And there was one VM on R3, and you can see that, oh, it's a little hard to read here, but it's down here. It's specified as OVS R3 port one. And then here, this is for R4, and here are the two ports from the two VMs that we're seeing. And then this is the logical switch we created that is VXLAN based, called Demo VXLAN Hyper-V. And now we'll see that the, those three ports that were on those two different hypervisors are listed down here. Um, and so, um, they're in, so all the connectivity looks good on them. And you can see that they're for the R4 and R3. And so now what we'll do is we'll go into R3, which had the one VM, and we'll ping in the logical space the, um, one of the VMs on R4. So we'll, we're, we have the address 172.168.1.3, and we'll ping 172.168.1.4, and all of that traffic will go out, go over the tunnel, and you'll see that as far as those VMs, even though on their different, different hypervisors, they think that, as far as they're concerned, uh, they have uh, local L2 adjacency. So this demo just uh, is showing running um, two Hyper-V hosts, uh, but it would work as well if we had ESX and KVM and Docker. Uh, we have all of those working, and you can connect any of those together, and they would all appear on the same log logical L2 uh, adjacent, if that's how you configured it. So that's what, um, kind of what we're, we're working on for uh, multi-hypervisor support and to show what's coming. I don't know if you wanted to go into a, your demo slides. So, okay, I think that was all I had. Yeah, so, so in our environment, we actually can do multiple type of hypervisors, and that's kind of the key thing. With this NSX um, product, you can actually plug in any type of hypervisors you want. We do work with a lot of different uh, companies as well. Um, providing the different type of OS support is in that environment. So thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to ask. Any questions? Thank you.